right. The first one is a come in snoon. Soon, come in snoon. snoon. <laughs> yeah, we got the POE Plus hat. This is the new POE hat from Raspberry Pi. Uh, I think we even have some of the old version. This version, it's like much slimmer. It's got this cool uh, lateral transformer. I think they've improved the design even a little bit. It's still got that fan in the middle. It's a pretty sweet POE hat. Um, they're not in stock. Uh, nobody has them in stock because they are still being Yes, please be careful because a lot of websites will let you back order stuff and they don't pay have for them. it, but they don't have it. So just sign up on our site. We'll so let you know. You'll get an moment. email, and then when you buy it, it's actually because you're going to get it shipped it's immediately. It's the real thing. Okay. Here we have, so it lets you basically, you have a Raspberry Pi 3B plus or a 4. You plug this in, and then you can power the Raspberry Pi through the Ethernet port uh, if you have a POE hub, which a lot of people do. Yeah, next up. Okay, next up uh, is this really adorable uh, woven cable. We have had this cable with a micro B connector on the end, and uh, now we have it with a USB C connector on the end. So you have a USB A on one side, USB C on the other. It's two meters long. It's really cool. It's got this Blinka pink and purple color way. I don't know. It's yeah. a very nice cable. Um, what I like about this cable is it stands out against all your other cables, which yes. are all black plastic. All right, next up. Next up, we have an 80-watt uh, soldering station from Atten. Um, I really like these quality uh, soldering stations. Uh, this one has a bunch of stuff built in, in addition to the soldering iron and 80-watt, which is connected, and the adjustable dial for temperature and the digital temperature readout. It's also got the brass sponge. All oh, y'all like it. There's little holders on the side. There's four slots or five slots or four um, HACO compatible tips, and it also has a uh, solder roll holder. So it's kind of got everything, and it heats up super, super fast. So um, if you want a soldering iron that you turn it on, and it's like instantly ready to go, an adjustable temperature, um, these are very high quality. And of course, you can change out the tips quite easily. Next up. Uh, next up, uh, to go with your POE hat, here is a, a terminal block to Ethernet jack. We have these with the opposite connectivity, the plug type. And some people are like, oh, I really like that, but I want the jack type. So let me grab it. One moment. I will show it on the overhead just because it's got a, it's got an interesting thing going on here. So uh, Ethernet, it, it's actually not Ethernet, it's RJ45. You can use it for Ethernet, you can use it for anything else. In fact, I wouldn't recommend it necessarily if you're using for Ethernet because you're going to like have the wires come out. But if you want to use Ethernet cable, Cat5, Cat6 cable for uh, sensors for making your uh, I squared C cables really long for whatever analog signals. As long as you're cool with the cable being very long, uh, and this has a nice um, pluggable terminal block, so this this seats in very nicely. But you can easily unplug it if you need to like disconnect the wiring from the cable for some reason. Um, and we have these also in the plug version. So this is the socket. Okay, next up, RJ45. Next up, we have this very tall case. I like this case. This is from Andes. They make these really beautiful cases. But what I like in particular about this one is how tall it is because you can fit a lot of stuff in here. And it's got some nice vents as well. So yeah. hold on. We don't stock every case. We, Believe we're me, very choosy, cases. so this is a good one to get. Yeah, it's got the clear top. Uh, the top is uh, acrylic, so you don't have to worry about, you know, Wi-Fi signal can come out this way. It's got uh, slots on the bottom, mounting holes over here. You can get to your uh, USB, sorry, the um, micro SD slot. This is a holes for the, the power LEDs, which are not on right now. Of course, uh, the Pi 4 um, audio and uh, power and the two HDMI outputs, and then, of course, the USB and Ethernet. So it's all good. I mean, this would actually be great for your POE hat, right? Because you can put that in here and you have room for hats or electronics inside because it's extra tall, but you still get that protective cover, but you can see through and see how your display is looking, your OLED, e-ink, whatever. Um, I don't know. I really like it. It's a very nice case made out of aluminum and clear acrylic. Next up. Next up, finally from Nordic. We've been, been waiting for this. To get this. We got this. So from Nordic, um, we now have the Thingy 91. So we've got the, the NRF 91 Feather, but I actually kind of liked their dev kit for this because it's kind of cool. It's got this rubber case. And let's, uh, let's go to the overhead. I'll, I'll show it off. You got this rubbery case, which I can extract this. It's got this plastic. Hold on. It's not that hard to remove. It's just hard to do it on camera. We're tired. Well, no, it's just, I, I don't, you know. We're also tired. Um, yeah, a little bit. 
Uh, so the NRF91, this is their, um, I think it's a Cortex M4 dual core with a cellular modem inside, LTE modem. This is a SIM card slot. I think it comes with a SIM card as well, which you can activate. This is, of course, data. It's not, there's no audio that I can see anywhere here. Uh, but for data, it's great. There's an antenna. This is the um, NRF52. I believe there's an NRF52 on here as well somewhere uh, that you can program to control. Um, this is, does uh, NFC to, to do the NFC pairing for the Bluetooth. I believe that's correct. Um, power switch. And then there's a bunch of sensors although I didn't think to open this ahead of time. So let me see if I can, yeah, there's the, I think this is the Bluetooth antenna. Hold on. I'm gonna do something risky. I'm gonna to try to open this. This is risky. This is very risky. This is probably a big mistake on my part. You're using a pen too, man. Right? Yeah, I know. Oh, shoot. Lucky this isn't pen. live or anything. I, I know. Can't. Okay, wait, hold on. I have, I have even a worse tool. I'm gonna screw to reset. Look, it's worth it. Welcome to bad ideas. This is bad ideas. Oh my God, it's connected on both sides. Okay, hold on. Okay. Whew. All right. So on the opposite side, uh, yeah. So we've got. I think this is like it looks like a BME 280 or uh, BME 680. Um, this is the back of the antenna. USB power uh, battery. So it's got a rechargeable battery, of course, and then more sensors, probably like, you know, accelerometers and stuff. Looks like there's two um, RGB LEDs over here as well. So basically yeah, a like ton of circuitry. So when Lady Ada takes it away, she's using her supervision on her on her eyes yes. to figure this out, but we can also zoom in. I can zoom in. I think this is a, uh, this looks like a light sensor as yeah. well. And then, yeah, these are probably accelerometer, gyro type things, um, environmental sensing. And then uh, this looks like NFC pairing, or something like that. So, so yeah, this is probably the NRF 52, or I think 840, with a Bluetooth antenna and all the circuitry. So, kind of, it's an all-in-one kit, which I really like. And then uh, here's the IMEI for the uh, device as well. All right. So, uh, look, you want to do cellular stuff? I mean, yes, the 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 feather is really good, but this um, is their official supported dev kit for the NRF 91. Okay. Next up. Okay. Next up, ooh, this is my favorite. So we finally got these two as well. This is the uh, PPK2. So this is the Power Profiler Kit. And this is something that like Nordic designed in-house for like measuring the power of their- We like this a lot. Cellular and Bluetooth boards, but then they're like, wow, this is really handy. We should sell this as a standalone thing. So this is like, it's like about a hundred bucks. It, this is the same capability of like, believe me, thousand dollar power monitors. This is an yeah. excellent power monitor. We have to use all of them. Well, the more expensive ones too. And yes. So this and is, I have the expensive ones and they're great. But this yeah. is like, if you are just doing basic battery, you know, zero to five volt power analysis for your ESP32 or your Wi-Fi or cellular or your Bluetooth, um, the PPK is a great deal um, because it comes with everything. It has a little built-in ammeter. It also has a built-in um, power supply, like it can supply the current to your device under test. And it comes with um, software, Mac, Windows, and Linux, and it works really wonderfully. I used it to do the mag tag. We did an eye on MPI. Analysis. We did an eye on MPI on it. Yeah, we liked it so really much good. that we wanted to stock it. This is, this is like, yeah, this is a great deal. If you're doing anything with low power, stop guessing about what your low power is. Stop trying to use a multimeter. Just grab this because you'll be able to actually do analysis on spiky, uh, power transmission okay. or use cases. Next up. Next up. Uh, will this uh, cure all of your problems? Yes. Uh, you know, yeah, probably. It'll cure that ha not having a cat paw uh, key cap problem. Yeah. Um, so check this out. All right. So this is exactly what you think. It's a key cap for your Cherry MX keys. Um, and it's got super squishy silicone toe beans. These are not translucent toe beans. We do have one that has translucent ones. These are pink, yeah. which who doesn't love? This is the Adafruit right. pink and black. And then you zoom down. I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in. Zoom in. Okay. okay. So yeah, this is, uh, you know, plug it onto any Cherry MX or compatible, you know, cross bar, basically any mechanical keyboard. And then it's like squishy and these toe beans are yeah. extremely enjoyable to, to pet or squish. And uh, if you have a cat, you know how much fun it is to do when I can do it, even if your cat's not around. Yeah. Okay. Next up. 
star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, our community, our customers, and our team? It is Neoki 1x4QT. So how do I explain it? Basically, you want to add mechanical keys to your project. You don't want a ton. You maybe only want four key switches. You want new pixels with them, but you don't want to do all of the, like, the wiring for it. You want to have it over I squared C. And maybe you also want to chain it with more of them, right? You can actually connect multiple of these. So this is a way of very quickly adding four mechanical keys with NeoPixels to any board. It has a Seesaw microcontroller on the underside, which does the I squared C to NeoPixel and key switch uh, conversions. So here I've got it. Okay, now i got to zoom back out. Zoom. I've got my um, Cutie Pie here, so it's just something that has an I squared C connection. And uh, this is running Arduino, but it works also with CircuitPython just fine, or, or Python, so you can use it with a Raspberry Pi, um, or what have you. And each key has a NeoPixel underneath, and this demo, just when you press it, it does a little NeoPixel color swirl. So that's, that's the demo, and you can have multiple keys pressed at a time. They have uh, Kale sockets, so these are socketed, so you can use any Cherry MX um, compatible key. This is, I think, uh, cherry black or kale black, I don't remember. Um, and then, of course, you put your favorite keycaps. Maybe it's a little kitten key cap, or maybe it's these translucent ones, so you get the glow through. And you basically have a, a very easy way to add four keycaps, key, key switches to your project. And then the I squared C comes in. It, you know, this is the chip that handles all of the key presses and the NeoPixel stuff. And there's um, address jumpers here, so you can close these, which allow you to connect multiple boards to one I squared C port. So you can have up to 16 of these on one I squared C bus. So if you're not, you know, not enough to make a full 108 key keyboard, but you're making like a macro pad, right? And you just want to really quickly get a bunch of keys together um, without, you know, much soldering. You just plug in your favorite mechanical key, and uh, you have plenty of mounting hole options. So you've got uh, four mounting holes on the corner. You can also plug into a breadboard if you don't want to use these cables um, for easy perfboarding. I just think it's like a fun way to get mechanical keys into your project without any key matrix handling, without NeoPixel handling. It's all done for you. It's